And as we can see, this is remarkably large for an SUV. For a small one, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, actually, it seems like it would be quite comfortable. Now, you are rigged up right now for travel mode. Yes, this is my, my normal travel mode, yes. So we're going to actually show you uh, the remodel. So when she travels, this is what it looks like. And then when you get somewhere and you set up camp, uh -huh. it, use, it transforms into camp mode. Into camp mode, right. Now, when I'm traveling, I leave everything in the same places and just move a couple of things into the driver's seat, like if I'm doing a stealth overnight, like in a Walmart parking lot. Other than that, I'm, I'm blessed to just have been able to uh, uh, put on limo tint, and that's been a nice new thing, so I don't have to worry about curtains. So now we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Unveil. And, un and take a look at your rig. Okay. So normally when I'm traveling, the towel is over things, one to keep people from seeing inside, although the limo t takes care of that. These items against this wall are all things for when I set up a base camp outside. I have a for portable fire pit that doubles as a charcoal grill, chair, table, stuff like that. Then this obviously is, I think, in zones. So this is like my bedroom bed zone. I have a super umbrella for um, shade. I haven't had a lot of experience with that yet, but I'm planning on playing with it some more over RTR. Um, my jacket, when I'm driving, I don't wear it, so it goes over my everyday food storage items, which are in those two cooler bags. I pick cheap ones because there's no point in spending money. Um, this is my stove, which I can use inside or outside. It also doubles as a heater. I'll show you more about that. Underneath of it is long-term food storage, pots and pans, stuff I don't need every day. This doesn't always travel here, but as you find travel buddies, they gift you bottles of wine and stuff like that. And I don't want to get in trouble if a cop stops me, so it's way back here hidden. Pillows work as insulation. Cycling? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I probably will do you this. You can probably, yeah. Oops, got to move. So I travel with a small dog. He's a 10-pound Yorkie. He has to have food and water. When we're traveling, he uses my folded-up porta potty as a step to get in and out because he's getting older and his legs are... <laughs> his legs have issues or will have issues. So So now you're on, you're on camp folding to make become camp I well I am unfolding to show you my bed okay okay because that's the easiest thing to do at this stage so most of the time Ozzy gets that fleece sleeping bag but if it was below 30 degrees I'd be using it too and he'd be sleeping with me when I get into sleep that bag often is here it doesn't look like it wants to stay there today um, uh, I can show you while I'm unfolding these things. This is Ozzy's bed uh, for daytime play use. Underneath is a bin. That's all my clothes. This is my black hole. We all have like a kitchen drawer or something. It has tarps. It has my, this is my bathroom bag. It has extra toilet paper. It has first aid kits. My current book. My new wrap that my friend Donna encourage me to buy because it reminds her of my old van <laughs> so I have a uh, well on the very bottom there's a regular six dollar uh, Walmart blue pad down on the very bottom you probably can't see on camera then I have These a therm backpackers pad backpacker pad you're right then I have a thermarest Z rest which I love the little bumps help hold heat and everything the other day I was in a thrift store I got this great inflatable mat that's got little rubber things so it doesn't slide and I only paid 99 cents for it yay thrift stores are wonderful so this is a normal $15 Walmart 50 degree sleeping bag it's my normal thing to sleep inside of this is my warmer sleeping bag which you can buy these either on Amazon or from um, uh, Big Five sells these Swiss Sport it's a 20, 20 or 30 degree hiker sleeping bag that folds into a little, you know, couple fistfuls, a very small package when it's folded up. It's been 30 something degrees the last few nights, so I'm, I sleep inside 
both of those when it's that cold. And to layer, so, you would just move out of one to the other. Loop yeah, I just yeah, I just take one off if it's too hot. I use this one as a blanket sometimes. I don't. It's a mummy bag. If it's really cold, I zip in. If it's not really cold, it's just another blanket with my feet in a pocket. So when I go to lay down, and no, I'm not a little girl, but I do this, and these pillows help insulate from the walls, which can get cold. And then Ozzy comes in. Come on, baby. He thinks you're going to bed. Yeah. And he, he always sleeps. His favorite place to sleep is down by my feet down here. So he's usually down there. So you're completely stretched out. I'm, look, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very comfortable. You really are. And I'm about 5'7". And so... So a, a small, a shorter woman would have plenty of room. And or even man. a taller man could even probably yeah. make it work. So yeah, you just, you, you know, and, that's well, not a problem. This normally, when I'm asleep, I normally have that pushed forward, right? Which, let me push it forward so the thing is hooked. Strap. So if my outdoor stuff not in here, I got a lot more room, but... Uh, this is common for me to sleep like this. No, that is really remarkable. The Passport is a large vehicle. Okay. And and like you said, if you when you set up camp, your outdoor stuff goes outdoors. You have Right. So then I've got like a good 10 9 or 10 inches more, right? Right. So now I'm going to show you really quickly. Oh. Um what I do when I get up in the morning more or less. There are these metal things that stick out. Right. To Catches put the for seats the, um, back up. Yeah. They hurt if you lean on them. Yes, I so would I, say. In a thrift store again, I got a Crazy Creek chair. Mm -hmm. Can't feel it at all. And then so, it's your chair inside or out. Right. So I do this configuration and I move pillows around. Now, normally I would move more stuff, right? Um, and at night, oh, I won't show you that. Anyways, so when I go to like make coffee first thing in the morning, I just remember hiking in a tent and, and being in a tent making coffee. So this is my stove. Uh, Bob's going to do another review on the stove because I've been using this for a few years. It is unconventional. It, it has some little, court, well, differences. Um, but this is, I keep water right here in a, in a Gatorade bottle. Um, this is enough water for me to, to make breakfast and two cups of coffee. So I pour water in here, light my stove. This window is closed when I'm doing this and it's okay because I always leave a window open. And um, then I can get access to both of these bags. And Which are I, food stuffs, I assume? Yeah, um, this Cooking is, items. yeah, this is long-term stuff. Uh, and this has, okay, so there's my coffee cup, okay, and I even have um, broccoli cauliflower pack that I don't always keep in a refrigerated bag. This one's four days old and probably going to be trash now, but I can keep it for four days. So this is my new ramen noodle cup, isn't that pretty? We, we, do, we can have some pretty things. Yes. It was 50 cents, and when it breaks, it breaks, but it makes me happy today. So, coffee's right here. It's real coffee. I use little coffee filters, which are in here. I'm trying to make this quick, because I don't want you guys to have to see everything. But I use these little dinky coffee filters. Well, everyone's interested in how you make coffee. Oh, well. <laughs> that's, a, that's one of those topics that just never goes away. Okay, so... There's these little bags, and I pop them open because my water takes a little longer than a propane stove to, to heat. So it gives me plenty of time to, you know, slowly do my process. You're in no hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I got all day and the rest of my life just for one cup of coffee if I want. And, okay. and I even use my, my from my some of my happier days, the wooden coffee scoop that made me happy. And it smells like coffee when I pull it out of the bag. And so you put... 
for anybody who's ever done an interview, it feels awkward. Uh, so you put coffee in here, like this. So you're kind of making the tea bag. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. That, that's a good... And then this thing, once I take the broccoli out, hangs over my coffee cup, like this. So yes, it's like a filter pack, but... You know, you you're making it yourself. And it. then my hot water would be ready and I just pour it over it like that. Is mm -hmm. that is that? Yep. Yeah. So that's that's how I go about the process of making coffee in my car. And so you cook inside? I do. Uh, but my stove is very specialized. And I've had years of, I, I'm always careful with this, it, it is an open flame, it is, it has an on-off switch, you do have to be careful, you can't just, you know, randomly think that you're, you're just because you're inside a vehicle, you're safe doing anything you want to do, but if you're careful with your process, with a stove similar to mine, you can cook inside, yes, and I cook inside with this well, stove. Well, we should say what makes your stove special. Uh, it runs on denatured alcohol. Um, what else makes it special? Um, well, it's size, for one thing. It's right, huge. and it doubles as a heater. That's it's made for a, it's a portable heater stove f that was made for boats. And so the bottom of it has a gimbal in it that actually keeps it um, always level. So the levelness factor is not something, and it it's not non-pressurized. So um, there's no little bombs to explode or you and know, whatever. Folks, let me say that but that probably doesn't make much sense to you. We're going to do a complete video on her stove, right? And you can see that, and it will make sense. Right. So, so you are very is... comfortable in here. Yeah, and even for me, I mean, me being, you know, I always think of myself as huge, but I'm, I'm not a small person, and I'm very comfortable in here. You guys are seeing me move this little green box a couple of times. This is a new, whether it's a toy or not, um, this is my new lithium battery that my solar panels that I just got will work on, and I'm testing it. I don't know how I'm going to love it yet, but um, I do travel with more travel gear so I don't have large computers I'm not running a refrigerator but I will be running all 5 volt USB items right. cell phone I have a little emergency radio that has an internal battery and uh, a tablet and that's all I'm really planning to run we'll see how that works I'll let Bob know um, it has uh, solar panels that it charges. Yeah, the solar little charges folding it. folding solar panels. Yes, and and little light bulbs, but they're under there. <laughs> I don't okay. want to dig all that out. And this is all your outdoor gear, which just would not be in here normally once you're set up camp. If I'm set up with a base camp, like when I'm at, on my own property, I set up a base, base camp with a tarp um, for sunshade and stuff, and then all of that stuff would be outside. Um, that's, I have my, right now, this is my art supply stuff. I'm getting ready to get back into some of my drawing and, you know, so I have some, some toys and some projects in here I'm playing with where sometimes they're just silly camper things, mm -hmm. you know, but whatever I'm working on, that's kind of in this, I think it's an old computer case, but it stood upright. So it made sense and it doesn't hurt my hip because it's padded. So, let's see. And I have my trusty shovel. Got to have a shovel. Got to have a shovel. Uh, and Ozzy has to have uh, a toy. Toys. Right. Porta potty. Porta potty outside. Oh, and one more, one more important thing for porta potty. Middle of the night, go into the bathroom when it's cold. There's nothing like a pair of even fake UGG boots or, or something. You put those things on barefoot and get out to use the bathroom, and you can get back in the sleeping bag and still have warm feet. It's kind of nice. I chose, I learned about porta potties and compost and toilets over years, and I learned that I like a toilet seat. So I went hunting for a toilet seat. So this is the 
current Reliance model that Walmart sells, the plastic connectors are a pain in the butt. And luckily, I had somebody help me. We, on a really warm day, we bent them with a pair of pliers, and we, we were so worried we were gonna break them, but now they work. And when we first got it, it was so tight, you couldn't fold this thing up. So, um, it, you just saw me fold it up, set it up like this. There's a little handle for when you're gonna carry it. You lift this, it's a great toilet seat. And then you open this piece and you put your plastic bag on here. So I can put a regular garbage bag or I can use wag bags or Reliant double duty bags or whatever they call those expensive things that yeah. we don't all like to pay for things that we're gonna throw away. But an eight gallon trash bag works just fine from just about anywhere. And it goes over that part of the seat I don't like sitting on a plastic bag that's not comfortable. And after all the years I've been doing this, I just want a decent seat. So I do this and then I actually have a little a little black like welcome rug that goes under this all the time. And um, I have a collapsible bucket which won't stay up unless it's half full, okay? But I use it underneath, and I usually put line it with another bag. Um, but that way my garbage is always in a bag in case something was to drip or leak. I just don't want to drip. And I use hamster shavings. Hamster bedding? Yeah, hamster, sh yeah. It's a little shaving stuff for a hamster. Yep. And you just dump some in here, and then just use the bathroom. Put your toilet paper in, put your stuff in, and as I use it, the bottom basket will stay up. The bottom bucket will stay up as I use it, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on something to hold that up. And so this is uh, where you actually use it at, is right here? Yes, and I normally try to park up against a bush or a tree or a friend's car in the right direction so there's a little more cover or I can use a tarp if I need to. Right. Right? But this door will close over the top of this. Right. Plus the fact that having something a little short is good for digestion. And so you could basically get the drift that uh, I can just come do what I gotta do. <laughs> Don't you love that? Yeah. <laughs> so, and then... <laughs> And then, you know, if I'm not using it and I need to use the, the side door, I just pull it over because most of the day I'm not using it. Of course, yeah. Okay, so side front door used to be my kitchen, but I just got Ozzy a car seat, which is so helpful with a dog. So um, Al took some pictures of that. Um, so my toolbox has been in the front in that wheel space. I just today got my new tool bag and I haven't had time to mess with that so the, it'll be in the tool bag after a while. I got a garden sprayer because it's easier to carry two gallons of water in a tall space than it is right. using floor space. It's nicely there. Yes and this one has an on off like a, you can you can lock it on so that it will be a constant spray if you want. But like at night, I can stick this piece, this might be hard detail, but I can stick it through the headrest so I can reach water if I run out in the morning or something, or if it's raining for three days. So it gives me a little more flexibility. Dog food got to travel with. Um, the silicone buckets fold flat. You've probably seen these. But, um, you know, it comes in handy for a bath, for washing dishes, for, you know, all kinds of things. So I carry one of those. You get that at Walmart or just anywhere? This one was a Walmart, but there's plenty of these things in the world now. So, um, and then I love a bubble, Bubba jug. I don't love black, but it's what I have for the moment. And I just went to the store and got some new broccoli. <laughs> And it's in one of those steam packs, so I just stuck it in here because sometimes I 
just keep it insulated for a little while while I was driving around. So, so you don't have ice chest, you just keep what you can. Uh, yeah, I, I, the, the broccoli doesn't have to be kept cold like this, but I was driving around, I didn't want Ozzy stepping on it, and, you know, I have my moments when I just don't want it out, so it's in something that way. And then I still carry, some of y'all know me as the, used to do coffee at RTR, yes. it's an awful small coffee pot, but I still have one for a fire pit. Yeah, so. you are famous for your uh, wood cooking over a wood open st fire. Yeah. Well, I had some practice. And let's see. In Costa Rica, see. was probably a regular thing. It was. There were actually like three or four years when that's all I had. I had what they call a cocina linea, just a, a, an outdoor wood stove. Three cement blocks and a couple of pieces of um, rebar for a pot stand. And that was, that was life for about four years, actually. This is my little version of a radio. I little little eaten radio and it has weather weather channels and a flashlight and uh you know you can you can wind it which takes forever in a day but if you were stuck uh but it has a rechargeable battery usb usb and so this is a mini i think the phones are micros now. Right. I think that's right. So it's I think this is a mini. The, mm -hmm. Right. It's a little fatter. But I can charge this while I'm driving. Or I'm supposed to be able to charge it with the new solar panels. But I haven't had a chance to mess with it. So. Um, There's your that, entertainment. That rides here when I'm in the cup holder. When I'm driving. Cell phones up in the cubby. That's basically it. I put my. When I register with a campground host. I take a piece of painter's tape and I put my permit on my Reflectix for the front window. Mm -hmm. That way when I'm driving in a parking lot, nobody has to see. I can put it the other side out and nobody knows I'm camping. Mm -hmm. so. You got everything. Uh, and showering is with the, uh, the pump of a sprayer. I could. I, I, I've only washed my hair with it so far because I haven't had it very long. Um, which it is nice to wash hair with. Um, you have thick hair. I have a lot of hair. You have a lot of hair. <laughs> I do have a lot of hair. Um, but, you know, I guess I've had two showers in the three, three showers in the three months since I left home this time. And before that, I think it's only about once a year that I actually go pay for a shower. And you're just uh, sponge bathing in the rig. Yeah, the, the bucket, plenty of water. I heat water on the stove. Um, I have a way that I can do, um, uh, I have a silicone bowl that has a lid and I can put a washcloth in there when I make coffee in the morning and pour, pour hot water on it and close it. And for like two or three hours, even if it's cold out, I got a hot washcloth. Yeah. So that's a nice thing for, you know, washing your face or whatever. Right. I also carry, um, I've been getting them from family dollar, but you can get, um, uh, uh, extra large washcloths like in the personal care department and so th they come in a pack of like about 48 they're maybe three dollars and I carry those with me for my lay down in the car bath on a regular basis and but when I'm out and I'm able to yes I get some real water in a washcloth and do a nice you know PTA or whatever people are calling it these days right. Um, brushing teeth is easy, a little bottle of water and a toothbrush outside. Um, my hair, I can go quite a long time and not wash it as long as I'm braiding it. But if I stop braiding it, especially with the wind in Arizona, I'm headed for dreadlocks and it's always an issue. So um, I actually put some chemicals in it the other day. I haven't done that in a long time. I used like Pantene conditioner. Feels good, but it's weird. Because <laughs> for years I've only used water. Um, uh, trying to think what else. I can't, I, right now I can't think of many more things. you got any more questions? No. I, you know, I would just summarize by saying as a long-term backpacker, you've got a huge amount of space and a huge amount of stuff by comparison. Sometimes I really feel like I have too much stuff. Too, too much, much crap. Stuff. All, uh, like all the time, I'm, I, I'm consistently going through the, what can I get rid of? You know, oh crap, I bought something today I need to, you know okay so I got the toolbox today now two things have to go so not one two so that that's a common
process for me. I, it's pretty common for van dwellers. But it is. Um, yeah, so, and nomads. so a lot of people are going to watch this and think, oh, that poor sad woman, I got to help her. She's in misery. And, you're thinking, and you think you're living in luxury. I'm doing really well. Yeah, I am. I own 10 acres of land. I just keep saying that, but I own 10 acres of land. I got some of the best friends in the world. I have people who have who give me like an emotional stability. We share it with each other out here that and if it wasn't for Bob, I wouldn't have these friends because if I hadn't come to RTR, I wouldn't have met them, but I have the emotional stability. I have yeah, what don't I? I have everything. I, what more could you want? Um, I can't think of much. Right, right. I mean, I'm not even into the money that much. Some people would say, oh, well, the next time you're in town, bring me a million bucks. Well, yeah, no, not so much. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a vintage pickup with a, with a Vardo in the bed. No, <laughs> I don't know. I just keep dreaming up new camper ideas. And it doesn't mean I want to live with them, but... Sure, there are always yeah. things you would like. Always to creative things to play with. Right. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Just I'm amazed at uh, your wonderful life, and so <laughs> uh, I just want people to know that you can do this with very little money, 250 a month, and you can live this life. You can. You you have to really work at it. And if somebody needs advice, um, if you come at me in a gentle way and, you know, on a good day or whatever, I, I'm more than happy to share what I know. And you don't, um, you're not on the internet, so no one can contact you that way. I have an old blog site because up until a year ago, I, I wrote a blog called Simply Lisa. And I'm not sure how that's going to develop but I am getting back on the internet. Should have my new tablet this week, I'm not sure. But I am getting back on. Okay, Okay. well, thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate your sharing uh, your life with us and your home, and, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Bob. And for everyone at home, I hope you've enjoyed this and been inspired that you can live the life of your dreams and the, your best life possible. Uh, like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel and we'll visit